Miss Rhodes here. Usually you see me at the Ben May Main Library, but today I want a field trip again. And today I brought Miss Dupree with me. And we're here at Dolphin Island and we met up with some ladies from the Alabama Audubon. Hi everyone, my name is Sabrina Cobb and I'm one of the coastal biologists with Alabama Audubon. And my name is Olivia Morpeth and I'm the other coastal biologist. All right, and how did you two get into this line of work of working with birds and working in the environment? Well, for starters, I had an interest in birds as a, at a young age with my grandparents putting up bird feeders in the backyard and telling me about the different kinds of birds that we're visiting. And I decided to go to college and uh, learn marine fisheries and then started working in Alaska. And I started really getting an interest in seabirds and decided to come here to Alabama to help protect their nesting areas. My interest started when I was in Girl Scouts when I was really young and my favorite part about it all was the nature walks and learning about wildlife. Uh, I went to school for conservation and wildlife management and after that I spent a couple of years working in wildlife rehab where I got to work hands on with lots of songbirds and uh, raptors and shorebirds as well. Well that is awesome and I'm sure there are a lot of young ladies that would be really, really interested in getting into the same line of work as you. Okay, so while we're out here on beautiful Dolphin Island, I was wondering if you could tell us and our viewers why Dolphin Island is so important to the birds. So Dolphin Island is a barrier island and it's also called the bird capital of the world. You can see over 400 species of birds here. Um, it's also extremely important because it's a huge important migratory area. Um, birds that are doing their spring migration north and their fall migration south use this island as a stopover point when they're heading north. Um, this is the first land that they see after doing their hundreds of miles of migration across the Gulf. Um, and it's also the last land where they have a chance to fuel up and get nice and fat before they do that same couple hundred miles south back to South America. Wow, that's interesting. And so for our viewers at home that may not be familiar, can you tell us what exactly is migration? Well, simply put, migration is a journey from one location to another location. Uh, most birds migrate, uh, making long distance journeys um, across bodies of water from South and Central America, for example, to North America. And uh, one, of, one example I can give you of a species that's only here during the summertime is our least tern, which is our smallest species of tern. Um, they actually migrate from South and Central America to Alabama to breed during the summertime and then turn around and go back to that area um, to spend the rest of the year and rest. Okay, well that is awesome. So speaking of migration, why don't we try to migrate down to the beach and see what birds we can see down there. Come with us. So what is the bird stewardship program and how did it get started? The Alabama Coastal Bird Stewardship Program was started in 2017 in response to the BP oil spill that happened in 2010. Our program consists of two components, the Audubon Coastal Bird Survey and the breeding bird surveys that we do during the summer. Um, the Audubon Coastal Bird Surveys take place during the spring, winter, and fall, um, and we focus on 11 species that um, are more sensitive to uh, coastal environmental changes. Um, part of our program also helps to educate and uh, bring awareness to these species. So, I see some signs back here behind us. Do y'all are y'all the ones that put these out? And what are they for? Yeah. So, as coastal biologists, uh, Sabrina and I come out here during the summer, which is the breeding season, and we survey all of the Alabama beaches, uh, and we look for nesting uh, coastal bird species. So like this behind us, when we do find a nest or a breeding activity, we put up what we call symbolic fencing. It's posts with our uh, keep out signs and signs that talk a little bit about the species and the nesting that takes place along with some paracord or just some rope. Uh, it kind of tells people, you know, keep some distance and stay out. Um, another thing we do as part of this program is just educate people. Uh, so when we do see people near the nesting or looking at it, we can tell them a little bit about what we do and the species that are nesting there. Okay, so these signs are here to make us all aware of nesting birds. So what are some of the challenges that nesting birds may face? So one of the challenges that they face out here is loss of habitat. Uh, so this dune and beach habitat is the perfect nesting area for our beach and coastal birds. But as more condos, houses, and hotels are built on beaches, they're losing that ideal habitat. 
So one of our focal species, least terns, have actually adapted by nesting on gravel rooftops of some buildings. Um, one of our other issues is predation. So anything from raccoons, foxes, coyotes, to seagulls and crows will actually eat the eggs of these nests. Um, and then one of the other issues they face are storms. As storms get larger and more aggressive due to climate change, uh, hurricanes and strong winds can actually cause storm surge and it'll completely wash away colonies and nests. So I love to come to the beach and I'm sure many of our viewers do as well. While we're here, what can we do? Well, while you're at the beach, one way that you can help the birds is to respect them when they are loafing on the beaches. Uh, oftentimes the birds will be gathered together in huge groups and they'll be sitting by the shoreline. And like us, they like to relax and rest. So we don't want to run through them. Instead, we can walk around them and, and look at them and kind of observe what birds are doing and, and give them the space that they need. Another thing that we can do is uh, when we're having our picnics on the beach, we can clean up behind ourselves and we can put the garbage in the garbage disposals. Um, this way, um, any trash that would be left behind won't um, attract any predators to any nesting birds uh, on our beaches. Another thing that we can do is um, we can actually get interested in birds and learn more about them so that we can spread the word and educate others on our awesome species that are here in Alabama. We can do that. Love all the answers that you gave there of things that we can do. What about volunteering? Are there any opportunities to volunteer? Yes, of course. Um, we take volunteers for our Audubon Coastal Bird Steward um, Surveys. Um, and uh, if you're interested in volunteering with us, you can head to our website at alaudubon.org and you can reach out to one of us through our email or our coordinator, Nicole Love. That sounds awesome. So we've made it to the beach and on the way down, I noticed a lot of different birds. So what are some of the birds that we will commonly find on our Alabama beaches? One of the birds you can find here in Alabama um, along the beach is the laughing gull, which I have pictured here. <laughs> the laughing gull is easy to identify. It's a medium-sized bird with a white colored chest, gray back, and a black head. These birds are opportunistic feeders, which means they'll eat just about anything. Uh, their primary diet does consist of fish. Um, usually they sit on the surface of the ocean uh, where they look for fish and um, they also breed here along Alabama on some of our offshore islands. So another common bird you'll see here in Alabama is the brown pelican. Now these guys weren't always so widespread. A couple of decades ago they actually faced extinction due to the use of a pesticide called DDT. Uh, so that pesticide was banned at our very own Gilliard Island in Mobile Bay was actually the main breeding location for these birds that helped their population recover. So some fun facts about these guys is uh, their main way to forage is that they'll actually dive into the water from up to 60 feet in the air. And to protect them from that, they actually have uh, air sacs underneath their skin that acts as a cushion in an airbag to protect their organs when they crash into the water. Um, and their gullet, their, uh, the flap of skin under their neck, pull up to three gallons of water, um, which they then filter out and just eat the fish. As we're walking along down here on the beach, y'all were telling us about some more fascinating birds, and I think our viewers would be interested in them. You were telling us something about the snowy plover? Yes, um, so I have pictured here a snowy plover, um, and these guys are pretty, pretty small plover. Um, uh, they like to forage along our beaches, um, uh, picking up little small insects and uh, crabs uh, that they find along the way. Um, and they actually are, um, are one of our protected birds. So we work really hard to monitor the uh, nesting uh, progress of these birds. Um, and they like to nest actually kind of in these dune sections like around us and behind us. Um, when we find a nest, we usually uh, will put up the fencing um, and uh, their chicks when they hatch um, are about the size of a uh, fun size candy bar. Um, and they're really cute. They look like little cotton balls with legs. Um, and I believe the guys are gonna do a fun activity on 
on the snowy plovers. Um, usually uh, it takes them about uh, a month to hatch and then a month to uh, fledge. So one of the other really unique species we have in Alabama is the American oyster catcher. These guys also nest here, usually on islands, and we don't have nearly as many of these guys as we do snowy plovers. Um, but these guys feed primarily on oysters and they'll actually use this big red bill to pry them open. Smart birds. Very. <laughs> Another common species that we have here that has a very unique beak is the black skimmer, which I have pictured here. Um, the black skimmer has um, a shorter beak on top and a longer beak on bottom. And this allows them to skim the water for their prey. These are fish eating birds. So they'll open their beak just enough that the bottom beak is underwater. And when they feel the fish, they'll actually close it really quickly and capture the fish. Um, these birds are one of our seabirds and they nest on our barrier islands and offshore islands as well. Um, usually uh, the chicks are uh, dependent upon the parents for uh, several weeks and once they fledge um, they head back to <laughs> um, their uh, preferred location. Some birds stick around year round and some birds head uh, to other states in the Gulf region. Thank you all for joining us today on beautiful Dolphin Island to learn about some of our coastal nesting birds. Thank you for having us. And thank you guys for joining us on this field trip. If you fell in love with the coastal birds and you would love to read more information about them, come see us at the library. We would love to connect you with that information. Don't forget, that reading can count towards your 400 minutes for your summer reading goal. And if you want to learn more about Alabama animals, visit us at our outdoor programming at our various library locations. See you soon. See ya. Bye. Bye.